All right, in the last episode, you heard me say, I'm gonna shut up now and ring the bell. I don't really need to ring the bell because this is the start of the video. I'm gonna clean off this workbench here. I'm gonna put that diesel 172 head up there. And I got new guides, valves, and all like that right there. And I'm gonna try to put that head together. I'm gonna do my first valve job, maybe. Maybe. And I'm gonna expose myself to everybody and they can critique how I done it and how dumb I am and all that stuff. But that's okay. That's okay. A man's gotta learn sometime. Right? All right. As soon as I get, get a second here, as soon as I feel strong enough, I'm gonna throw that head up on this workbench. But you know, I got to thinking about something based on the discussion I've had recently. You know, I was talking to somebody you're complaining about how then this wasn't right or that was too hard or they didn't have enough of this. And you know what? The best way to fix something is to do something about it. Just get up off your rear end and go do something. Hey look, here's a nice cool old axe I had found. Somebody used it for a mall a little bit, looks like. Anyway, it needs a new axe handle. And I know the lady that can do it. But she ain't here right now. So, I'm going to throw that head up here and go to work. Alright, I got the head up here. I don't know what I've done with the valves I had. The ones I already took out. Been carrying them around trying to find new ones. They had Made in Brazil stamped on them. Not stamped, but etched. Laser etched, so they can't be that old. Anyway, they're wore out. And I can see those guys are knurled. So I'm going to try. I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of the valves. Try not to lose all the keepers, but I think I got new ones. And then uh, I'll bring you back. Of course, you all know how to remove valve springs, probably. I'm just going to use that thing right there. All right. Here we go. There's our exhaust valve. Pretty daggone loose, I'd say. Is it the exhaust valve or is it the intake? Hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a part number. Laser etched in there. You can feel that wear. Hmm. I wonder if it's poor quality valve or just the guides were loose to start with. Look at them weird kind of keepers. Hmm. It's weird. See, those were new L's right there, too. Say Brazil right there on them. There it is in backwards. This is the exhaust valve, by the way. The other one was the intake. See that? She rocks pretty good. That's okay, I got new guides. Somebody shimmed it up for high performance. Some funny business on this old thing, look at that. You gotta pop that one in so you can get them off. Let's say you're the kind of guy and you work in construction, you scavenge stuff when you can, when you can and you scavenge yourself a bunch of screws and they're just a scotch too long. Well, you could, you could go get your grinder after you put it in. They poke out the other side, grind them off, and all like that. Or you could put them in on an angle, and then it won't poke through the other side. I'm just saying, some of you younger fellers might might can use that tip. All right, here's a few observations. Don't look like that exhaust valve was sealed until good, eh? Looks like that one was hitting a little high spot, but it's probably because the guides were so bad. Wow, that valve's hitting way down in there. The intakes. I guess I watched another guy do a video on it. It's the same thing I'm doing. He was much more detailed and better, but his were all sunk in there like that too. So I guess, because I'm going to go with it. 
All right, let's see if I can knock them guides out. All right, here's what I came up with. Let me take my ear muffs off. I already put them on to, you know, to protect my ears from this loud thing. I was going to try hammering them out, but then I realized I'm old and a little bit lazy. So I found a 7 16 deep socket from my extras pile from my shopping at pawn store days, pawn shop days. And I cut the end off a broke chisel from my air hammer. And looky there, slips right in there. I'll bet you that air hammer drops them right out. I'm fitting to find out. Well, that worked slicker than heck. Sure did. Let me try to figure out something to sit you up on so y'all can see too. We'll do it one handed. How about that? The only uh, thing is, I wish it was a little bit longer. Alright, I'm going to do it two-handed from now on. I don't know if that's how professionals do it, but that's how I'm doing it from now on. I might even have to make up a little something to drive them back in. Got to be more careful going in, though. Maybe out of brass. I'll ponder that later. All right, I think I'm gonna take a wire brush and clean up these seats. What I really need is some more items in my shop. I just had to dig all that out to find these. Which, by the way, I bought at a pawn shop or auction or something. I can't remember. Maybe that one's just the thing. Those are the guides. It boogered up the, uh, I think those are the intake ones. Let me double check. One's longer than the other. Yeah, the intake ones are longer. Must be they're harder too because it boogered up the end of them, but it did not, the exhaust ones. At least not as bad. All right, now I gotta dig in here and find my vel seat grinding stuff. You know, geez, I forget I even have stuff. Here's something I bought. I'm not saying it was a sketchy situation, but it sure looked like it, felt like it. A little Greenlee hydraulic hole puncher. Probably could have used that a bunch of times if I remember I had it. There's something else down here too. I'm I'm gonna get that Cornwell tools. I ain't got a clue. Yes, I do. Now that I just opened it, I was looking for that the other day. That's my good body saw. I bought that and file. I bought that at the auto fair from an old guy some years ago. And. uh seat from Washington, a freight out Washington. Anyway, I get sidetracked. It could be I have ADHD HD TV or something like that. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's been working so far. That leads me to something else I've been thinking over. You know, you go and you get analyzed and they tell you, oh yeah, you've got a condition that's ADHD or it's something else. We need to treat that with medication. I wonder, I just wonder if older folks ever had stuff like that and without medication they were able to figure out how to make it work for them and survive. Just wonder. You know, some of the smartest people I have know are kind of quirky. Does it make sense to regulate that out of them? I don't know, it's just, I'm just an uneducated guy I'm thinking, that's all. Don't, don't read me the right act. All right, now I done got some more crap out. I found these. New Wave L seat cutters. They look like a good thing. Well, you can do all kind of stuff with these things.
you can cut the throats out 60 degrees 75 60 <laughs> I don't know if that's what I want to use or whether I want to use this what would y'all do I've been missing for my my valve grinder, I think. I really need to get this truck done and out of my way. Well, it ain't all of it, but it's a part of it. I bought some books for this thing. I gotta pull them out and see what degree that's supposed to be cut. And uh, I need to freeze my new guys too so they'll slip in. And what else? Let me figure out whether I'm going to use that or that. I don't know. I don't know yet. But it is 7 o'clock and I'm getting kind of hungry. So I'm not going to ring the bell, cause, but I am going to go in and not come back out. I'll come back in the morning. That's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm back. I really need to put some stuff away. I think I decided I'm going to use my stones on the head. These cutters probably work, but I'm going to put them away and uh, save it for the next time I do something like this. Whenever that may be. I probably own these things five years or better and never used them. We'll put them back in there in the cabinet. And Probably the same thing will happen again. I'm going to have a heck of an auction here when I... Well, my family will have a heck of an auction. Whenever I kick the bucket. Alright, I went down, put some oven cleaner on this thing. Hit it with a pressure washer and got it pretty clean. I've labeled where my exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, and so on are at. So that I know where to put the short and the long guides at. So now, what i got to do is... Uh, Probably just run a brush through there with a little brake cleaner and then go down and get them out of the freezer and install them. Maybe I'll get half and then go back and get the others. Thought I had some engine cleaning brushes around here somewhere, but I cannot find them. And I keep everything so well organized. All right, I successfully installed the exhaust guide. And what I had did was I fired up my torch and warmed this up a little, not a lot, and then grabbed the piece out of the freezer. I got a little freezer over there. I forgot that when I took them down in the house. Put it between the ice cream and the other stuff there. And, uh, and then I used this. And I used this brass hammer to get it started. Pro I wonder if you can still buy those. And then I've got this set up for the correct height. A little stare it square. All right, I'm gonna I'm keep going. All right, I done done three. This is working pretty good. I tip the head up, take the torch, run it in the port. It's interesting, you see how it swirls in the port. The flame, that is. And, uh, then pull my guide out of the freezer and whack it in there. Have to clean up the little chunks of brass coming off my hammer and brass punch there, but that's no big whoop. All right, I'm gonna carry on. All right, I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Fresh out of the freezer, I'm going to do this one-handed. Last time I did this, it worked out bad for my thumb. 
I know it's a brass hammer, so you don't want to lick those things, or your lips will, your tongue will stick to them. All right, see my little. That one was perfect. They all grow a little bit is what happens. Because that was touching. It's all consistent. Huh. Alright, we got all the new valve guys installed. Now I need to see about these valve seats. Well, first time ever I ground some valve seats. I dig the exhaust first. It didn't take much. That one did though that one was a little bit wonk wonky the rest of them was just a little boop, boop. now reading this manual it just calls for a 45 best I can tell unless the seat gets too wide and it's not wearing in the center of the valve then you've got to raise or lower by cutting um, I forgot Hang on. a 30 or a 45 but let me let me see here I mean a 30 or a 60 30 60 all right well as usual nothing in my life works exactly right see there the stone is hitting right there before it can cut the seat and I've already got a little bit on that side so I think I got no choice but to grind that out with a die grinder, which is more than I wanted to do because that's going to take some time to do it. But ain't nothing to do but quit crying and get busy, right? Right? Right. Actually, it's not that bad. I didn't wake up this morning thinking I'd be porting out a 172 diesel head. I'm going to call it a Boss 172 now. Anyway. That's what they look like. That's before I start. I'm an expert by now. I've done three of them. Well, so far that's what my intakes look like. I think I gotta make another cut on top of the intake seats. A 60 degree cut. The exhausts are looking good. Alright guys, the time has come for me to explain that I'm a big dumb dumb and this is a major fail. Because, look at this little diagram. See where the 60 is? And the 45 and the 30? Well, the exhaust valves, not a fail. The intake valves, they're too close. The pattern is too close to the edge there, in my opinion. It should be centered. So that make it wear out quicker. Will it run? Probably. Well, anyway, here's where I screwed up. I went over here and got my cutter, and I found one that said 60 degrees. And in my brain deadery, that's the actual word, I, it's a brain, it's a brain dead again, I found one that said 30 degrees. Excuse me. See that right there? It says 30 Look at that angle. See where it cuts? Up on top. And I think I had this backwards in my head. I'll have to review the video and you can too. But I was thinking if I cut the top, it would raise the seat. But that is not the case. It lowers it if you think it through. Now look at this one. Where it, where'd it go? See there? It says 60. 60. See where it says 60 there? <laughs> Measure it backwards, apparently, on the new wave valve seat cutters. Well, the problem here is, because of that, this will not even come close to touching the seat to raise the seat. So I think the only solution I've got here is either A, just say to heck with it and run it, which it would run, 
but I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think what I got to do is take it to a machine shop and have them put new valve seats in it. Or maybe they'll say, hey, you're a dumb dumb at even more than you thought, go ahead and run it. I don't know, but I think I think I need a professional to tell me that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pack this up, and I'm going to take this thing to a machine shop next week. I think I know a one that will do it and see what they say. And I'm going to let them giggle and tell stories to all their old car buddies about the dumb dumb who couldn't even figure out a four-cylinder tractor head for Pete's sake. All right. So that's going to conclude this video on that subject for now. I'll post an update later when I got one. All right, I'm going to ring the bell with my play dog tags. They're not real. All right. That's the kind of world I live in. The good news is, after I put all this stuff away, it'll pave the way for a 57 Chevy video tomorrow, I think. I'll be able to get that car out as soon as that boy finishes waxing it, which he has informed me is not one of his favorite things to do. <laughs> Go figure. You know, you gotta do a lot of things in life that ain't your favorite. Sometimes you even gotta eat stuff that ain't your favorite.